It's time we talked about the cleaner. Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore. I am happy to talk to you today, especially every day where I get to talk about independent films worth checking out. I have the director of The Cleaner with me today. Aaron Elders is here to talk about the film. And uh, as we were just discussing, I don't know anything about the behind the scenes of this movie. It is a uh, unique, I would almost describe it as, and correct me if I'm right, it's like a noir thriller. It has aspects of noir in it. Um, so uh, I hope that my interpretation is correct. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I, mean, I think the, the film is kind of like half uh, kind of crime noir. Um, it's kind of like a, like an ill-equipped private eye story, you know? Um, and then half like family drama and, and, you know, the, the idea was kind of like, how do these two, these two aspects of the story sort of feed into each other and, and reverberate off of each other. So, so yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good, that's a good, uh, analysis well i do like i do like when it's a noir story or like a there's there's aspects of it where the the character is not fully equipped they're not uh maybe not even good at that job you know what i mean like yeah. in a good way it kind of takes you on that journey where did where did all of this where did the the elements of this story come from well i think that you know this movie is very much um kind of started with basically like me and sort of like a group of collaborators being like, let's make a movie. Um, and then what, what should that be? And then starting to kind of just mine, um, whatever, or, you know, our lives or whatever for, for story elements. And so we kind of first got the, the idea of the character of, uh, Buck, who's the, who's the, the main character in the story. And he's kind of based off of, um, my uncle. Um, and so he's, you know, he's kind of this like, basic guy who's kind of trying to scrape by and he's, he's just, you know, living kind of day to day. And, and, you know, when we started writing, it was like, what, you know, what kind of situations can we just put this, this character into and, and, you know, just where can it go? So, I mean, it was this very like long, uh, I feel like the, the script was a, was a long process because it was very like or, organic. Like we had the character first and then tried to figure out sort of the plot second. So, um so yeah and then um yeah i mean still trying to figure it out basically <laughs> well that's that's where the best independent films really sort of come from is character right i mean right. it starts with character and then throw them into you know some crazy situation uh and whatnot i will say that uh relatable for me is you know dealing with uh, an elderly mother that's has issues you, you know i've um, dealt with that in my personal life, you know, uh, dealing with my own mother and, and kind of the challenges that come with that. Um, she's not a big beer drinker though. So, uh, right, right, right. uh you know, <laughs> well, yeah, we wanted that. I think that there's something really interesting about like, you know, when someone kind of takes on a sort of like caregiver role in, in life, it's like, there's a sort of like a, there's a symbiosis there. Right. Like, and that was kind of, one of the things that we wanted to explore was like, you know, this character, he's on the day to day, he's like having to take care of his mother and like the, how that kind of shapes their relationship and the sort of the nuances of that. Right. Like they have, I, it's like they have this very, like the dynamics of their relationship was something that was very important to the film. I think. Tell me about um, Linda Carter. Uh, 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 there's she, first of all, how'd you get her to be in the movie? How is she so like incredibly gorgeous at, at, you know, I don't even know how old she is, but, but I watched her when I was a kid on television, obviously in Wonder Woman. Um, but Linda Carter is, I mean, she's, um, she's amazing. I mean, I, she, she, she's a timeless icon. Yeah, she is. I mean, she, she's briefly in Wonder Woman 84. I'm sure that's not a spoiler. People know that by now. Um, but in this, she really has, a, a, I would say, a much juicier role um, to play. And how did you get her? What was it like working with her? And did, was it hard not to like geek out a little bit 
Um, I, I'm sure I would have, but tell me the whole experience of, of having her be a part of this project. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know, you know, a, a lot of putting this movie together was kind of half, uh, our, our team kind of reaching out to people that we had, you know, collaborated with before. And then half kind of very much like the traditional process of, of having a casting person kind of help out. I, I don't know how, I can't remember how we actually got the script to Linda. Um, but actually that role originally was supposed to, we, we, we talked to Dana Delaney about it and she ended up um, being on a TV show. And so she couldn't do the movie. And then we kind of were scrambling to find another option who, who could, who would be a good fit. And um, somehow we got to, we got to Linda Carter and it was like, obviously like a dream. She's, she's so great. And um, you know, like I, it was like, th this was definitely a role that I had always pictured as like a very, like, not necessarily like David Lynchian, but like kind of this character that's a little out there, you know? And, and it was really interesting because I, we, when we, we got to shooting Linda's scenes, like she, she kind of came out like, performance guns a blazing and like was way like like just like her performance was so interesting i like didn't i was kind of beside myself on set and was like i don't this is like just really like exploring stuff within the scenes like each beat was like really this kind of fascinating moment and she like was really kind of playing with like the timing and it was just like so interesting. I was kind of taken aback when we were shooting. I was like, I don't know what I'm, what, what is, this? I don't know what this is. And then I remember looking over to um, Jeff Tomcho, my DP, and he was like, this is, this is brilliant. And, it, and it, you know, it ended up being like, we, I got into the editing room and it was like this incredible, like someone just handing you like so much amazing raw material to work with. So, I mean, yeah, work, working with her was incredible. And, and, you know, definitely like an intimidating thing, you know, you kind of have to uh, figure out how to, how to put the, the fandom aside and, and, you know, just, just get into the work. So it was, it was great. Well, I mean, it, to me, her scenes were electric. I mean, yeah. it was just, it was just uh, uh, palpable that just like, like, whoa, like she, it, it, it made me think like she needs to do more stuff, right? Like, you know, who looks so amazing at, at, at her age and is able to just pull off th those, those kind of chops is, is, in, is incredible. So. Um, and just being able to bring like a mood to it. Like it was like, <laughs> she, she kind of brought this really, it, it, like, it's almost like a sort of mischievous mm -hmm. like tone to it. That was, just, I mean, it was just like totally her, just her. And it was like so exciting. So yeah, I agree. <laughs> What about the 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 rest of the cast of characters too? Uh, there's there's a whole. How did you put together uh, the the rest of the actors in this ensemble? Yeah, it, I mean, I, I feel so I'm so grateful for the cast that that we we got for this movie, and all just I mean, just to be able to have such an amazing uh, just cast of actors are all just the most lovely people um, was, I feel so fortunate to have that be the case on, on my first movie. Um, you know, some of that was um, I had, you know, with, again, it was a sort of weird mix of like, um, so I had actually started the project and, and it, I actually co-wrote the script with King Orba who plays, plays Buck. And, and so it was like, you know, him and I kind of trying to build the project from the very beginning together. And, you know, it was like him bringing out a bunch of people that he had worked with. Like, you know, he's, he'd worked with Luke Wilson a bunch and is, is close with him. So it was kind of, we're able to bring him, him in. And then also like um, through him, I worked with James Paxton before. Um, so it was like, it was first, it was like, okay, we're making this movie. Like let's, let's bring our friends in. And then once we had a couple of the puzzle pieces together, we were able to like, bring a casting person in and, and that's kind of how we were able to get the script to Shelley Long and um, kind of fill in, fill in the cast. But yeah, it, was, it was definitely like a bunch of sort of making phone calls to, to people that um, again, like the, our, our um, producers and, and just other people in the project have worked with. And um, 
yeah, just, just you know, putting it together one one person at a time. <laughs> so, well, it's interesting. I think a lot of indie filmmakers think that you know actors at that caliber are not within reach, and I would say they are if you ask, right? Like yeah. the worst that can happen is a no, right? That is the absolute worst that can happen. So, so go for it. I really feel, you know, when I see some beginning indie filmmakers work and I'm like, you know, this story's there, whatever, but you could have gotten some more experienced SAG actors. It's not, you know, I mean, it's fortunate, first of all, if you just know them personally, right? Like that helps. Right, right. So, like, you've got to do that. You've got to do that outreach, and you know, strive to kind of get those people in 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 the right places. What were some of the other challenges that you faced in in getting this film made? Um, it was, uh, you know, I think it was uh, it. It's just like it's one of like it. It, it just everything takes so long, right? And I think that was something where again, like this being my first movie it was like you know all stuff that i knew but then when you're in it you're like ah oh, it's just taking forever to 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 get the financing or to get people to you know it's just like it, it's hard to kind of get traction and then i for this one again it being my first one it was hard to have a perspective of the process and and what what should be happening at any at any given moment i mean you know it had the definitely the the same challenges that i think all like you know intimate indie films have and you know there's never enough time and there's never enough money but you know you have to kind of figure out how to march forward um and so you know actually it was funny we did uh it, it we shot in like 2019 and I, I think it was like it rained every day almost of the shoot so it was like you know hadn't rained in la for like the entire year until of course we we needed to make a movie. So, you know, but that, that seems, seems about right. Uh, yeah. It's uh, yeah. those kind of things that you can't, you can't, you know, you can't really plan for, I guess. But what was the, like, if you could go back, like knowing like the process takes so long, and that's the other thing I would point out to filmmakers, like however long you think it's going to take double or triple that. Cause that's, yeah. that's the reality. But um, for yourself, like if you could go back and talk to yourself before you made it, what, what, kind of piece of advice would you would you give you know the younger version of yourself you know that's beginning this journey what would you say i mean i think everything that i wish i could kind of fix is all script you know i mean they do it's like i don't know it's that thing where I, i'm always like you know you kind of hear these like very um you know i think a lot of people have the same thing it's like they, they wish they would have spent more time on the script and they wish they would have fixed all of the the issues in in the story but you, know, you think that you're you think that you're the exception right so um and not that we didn't i mean we definitely like going into it we felt we had we had written the best script that we we could um and felt good about it and but it's just like looking back now it's like oh, i wish you know had i known what i know now i would have i would have done this differently like in the in the story or whatever um but yeah so i mean i think it's just yeah it's, it's like understanding that it, it's going to take time and and you're going to be living with the project for like i mean we started writing this in 2015 so you're going to live with it a long time so like you know be okay with like spending as much time as you need to on the on the script i think well, you're within the, I, I went to the Sundance Producers Conference. I was fortunate enough to go one year and they really, they were saying that like from concept to release is usually seven years on average. That's average. Yeah. Right? I mean, that makes sense. So, yeah. So you're in that range. There you are. Yeah. I mean, I remember like being in like, I, you know, back in the film school days, like reading some story about how like Weekend at Bernie's took like 10 years or something. And I remember at the time being like, what were they doing? That seems so crazy. And then it's like, you know, then you, you actually make a movie and you're like, Oh, yeah, totally surprised. It didn't take longer. So yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, where yeah. can people find out about uh, the cleaner and, and uh, how can they see it? Uh, so yeah, so it's out October 12th digitally um, wherever, you know, I think all of the for rent and whatever on, on Amazon and all, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think you can follow the project on, uh, I mean, it's on, I think, 
almost all social media platforms, at least Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, you know, all uh, the cleaner movie is our handle. Cool. Aaron Elders, thanks for talking to us on the Film Threat Podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank <laughs> you.